Hello, my friend. It's time for God's Word. It's Godcast, not a podcast, not a broadcast. God's cast. A chapter a day keeps false teachers away. That's what this is all about. And I ask you to share it. Share it with others. Let's get God's Word all over the place. Not for my benefit. Not at all. In fact, I'm maxed out on my amount of friends I'm allowed to have on Facebook now. I tell you that not because I want you to know, oh, look how many friends I have. Because seriously, I only know about 150 of them. No kidding. So, um, it's not for me, is the point. It's for the Lord. Let's get his word out. John chapter 4, from the New American Standard Translation. But first, Father in heaven, thank you so much, Abba Father, for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. We ask for more of that. So we can have your peace beyond all understanding, regardless of what's happening in the world. We know that you are in control and you've got us. You promised that, Lord. Regardless of what happens, you've got us. We love you. I ask you to forgive us for our sins and we forgive those who've sinned against us. We will not be forgiven unless we forgive others. That is clear in your word. We forgive those who've sinned against us, Lord no matter how hard that might be. Just do it. And Father, please give us wisdom, discernment, understanding, and revelation. I ask that for all of us in your name, Lord Yeshua, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Here we go, John chapter 4. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing, more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were. He left Judea and went away again into Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph, and Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, being wearied from his journey, sitting, was sitting thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman from Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me for a drink, since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is, who says to you, give me a drink, You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Hmm. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? Who gave us the well and drank of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. He said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. This you have said truly. Busted. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you, you people, the Jews, say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He was called Christ. When that one comes, he will declare to us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. 
Bam! At this point, his disciples came and they were amazed that he had been speaking with a woman, yet no one said, What do you seek her? Why do you speak with her? So the woman left her water pot and went into the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all the things that I have done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out of the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him anything to eat, did he? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white for harvest. Already he who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for life eternal, so that he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. From that city, many of the Samaritans believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they were asking him to stay with them. Excuse me. And he stayed there two days. Many more believed because of his word. And they were saying to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and know that this one is indeed the Savior of the world. After the two days he went forth from there into Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did in Jerusalem for the feast, for they themselves also went to the feast. Therefore he came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. That was his very first miracle. And there was a royal official whose son was sick at Capernaum, when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea and the Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go. Your son lives. Here's the key. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off as he was now going down. His slaves met him saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. This is again a second sign that Jesus performed when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. All right, my friend. I hope this is um, beneficial to you. I'm sorry, Facebook doesn't let me go live anymore. So I have to pre-record it and then post it. And so because of that, you don't get a notification as to when I do them. But I hope you still get to see them. And I hope that Facebook changes its mind. But there is coming a time when God's holy word will be labeled as hate speech. It's coming. I've already seen signs of it now. See you later. God's in control, period. Period. And we don't quit. We don't quit on God. He doesn't quit on us.